Hello, welcome pen friends. Welcome to another Singles Ink Profile. Today we're doing this beautiful bright blue uh, Noodler's Liberties Elysium. Sent to me by pen friend uh, KS. It's a sample, wonderful sample. Thank you so much. And let's dive right in. Let's get it into the bath test because on the Goulet site it said that this is water resistant and semi-permanent. So I'm excited to see, you know, how it'll act compared to some of the other inks that we've been looking at. I, I really am. I want to see how much of that blue stays there. Okay, it also said on their site that it's not fast drying. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I'm, I'm exploring that. And that whole subject of drying times has never really interested me that much. But I'm beginning to realize that it correlates with the bleed through and the pages. So, so it's neat. I don't know if this is what they used for this one. There, this is a Goulet bookmark, but I do know that this shade of blue is associated with um, with Goulet pens, and I can see why. You know, it, it's their color. It's it's there. Okay, so jumping right into the Rhodia Gold Book, I'm just finishing up those last few pages that I showed you guys. That you know, because I don't, I hate to waste the paper. Um, here it is in the broad nib and the Serendipity, which is a Yowo steel nib. And then I jump down into the, the Lamy Fine Nib here. So this ink is available at Goulet Pens for $12.50 for a great big 90 mil or 3 ounce bottle. That's the, the equivalent. And then you can get a sample for $1.25, a 2 mil sample. It's just, it's real pretty. It's, it's that bright blue, almost like Bay State uh, blue, but we'll look at a comparison panel here in a minute. Um, my first impressions, I just love the color, but I was nervous. I thought, oh dear, I wonder if it's going to stain my Vista. Um, and uh, I put that to rest because it didn't. It cleaned out real good. But I still clean, it still had a little harder time with cleaning it and dealing with it <clears throat> than I did regular inks. So I know that it's quite strong. Um, but I love the bright color. And I'm hoping that it's overall less aggressive than the base state blue. I think I think that's what we're going to find, but I'm not too sure. Um, you know, I think I actually need to work with it more even than I have already. So I looked this up to see what Elysium meant, um, and and I if I got it right, it, it sort of translates to a place or state of bliss or delight. So that that's cool. Um, and I, like I said, I gave it a B on the clean out scale. This was the chromatography. Uh, that made me a little less nervous because it did move. And, you know, it, it stayed a little bit there. It certainly didn't just disappear. But uh, it wasn't like a, a dark, dark blue line staying there. So, okay, we got a bunch of notebooks to look at. Um, we have the little Moriman spiral notebook. Here it is. It, it's really bright on that paper. That's that real smooth paper that kind of feels like a, a Rhodia or a Claire Fontaine. Here it is in the broad nib. And I started to see shading quite a bit. And that was nice in the broad nib. And then here it is in the Lamy Fine nib. And let's look over. We had no bleed through, which, wow, that's pretty good. That paper holds up good. Okay, and then here's the little CVS Caliber. 4x6 memo book and it made a nice bright showing on there too <clears throat> in the broad nib and then it, and same thing in the in the fine nib this is saturated enough to handle this paper for sure um, and again I saw quite a bit of shading in the broad nib I didn't see as much in the fine nib I saw a little but nothing that I would get all you know happy about really just enough. <clears throat> okay, it tried to bleed through where it was painted on, but it, it's this paper. Keep this in mind as we look at some of the other papers because that's pretty pretty surprising. And I do try to paint them on the same way. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, here's the little pocket size Loistrum. And yeah, I felt like it lost something on here. But we are dealing with that cream paper, and that happens sometimes. It's slightly cream. It's not as, uh, you know, it's not yellowy, really. But you see how it looked on the white CVS caliber. You can't beat that. 
<laughs> That's so interesting. Um, so here it is in the broad nib and then in the Lamy fine nib. And it, it did a lot of bleeding through this Loistrum paper. Uh, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure you can see that, especially in the broad nib, but I wouldn't really be too comfortable with it in the fine nib either um, because I use every speck front and back of my bullet journal. So there's that. Okay. And then one more notebook before we get in the writing samples on the paper, the live notes from Pen Gallery with 68 GSM Tomoy River paper. Okay. So here we've got nice bright blue. Um, here it is, broad nib and fine nib. I saw some shading here, quite a bit, where you dot and tops of some of the letters are lighter. Uh, quite a bit for my eye, and that was very pleasing. And then not as much in the fine nib, but you still, I still got some. Now, turning it over, it did try harder to bleed through this than any of the other, uh, well, no, that's not true. Then I'm, I'm only trying to compare it to one, and that was the... Uh, well, what am I saying? All right, this is the CVS caliber paper. It tried there, but it didn't bleed through as much. And then with the little Moriman paper, it didn't bleed through. So I guess I was trying to give it, uh, you know, just to notice that, which I thought was weird. And then, of course, it, it bled through worse in the Loistrum. So that I was, I was telling you wrong. Okay, let's get back to this. We're going to compare this one also to the 52 GSM. Um, Tamoy River paper so we'll keep it right here and here we are okay the Tamoy River 52 gram white paper that's this one and it's it's nice and bright on there just before it, it looks almost like Bay State blue to my eye um, the camera may be brightening things just a little oh, yeah it is I can tell that it is so that's where you need a sample folks you really do um, if at all possible, because then you can see it on your notebooks and in your lighting and camera and whatever. Okay, so it did go through where it was painted on, but it didn't go through um, with the writing. So let's see how that compared. Okay. The two Tamoy Rivers. Off to the left there is the 68 GSM. And then on the right is the white. Of course, that white just sort of to our eye brightens it up. And then how much bleed through? Um, let's compare the bleed throughs. It bled through more of the 52 GSM, and I can understand why. That's thinner, and it just did. But I, I still was okay with the writing part. It, it shadowed quite a bit. There's heavy shadowing. But th that never bothers me as long as I don't get bleed through. And you no know, bleed through on the letters. Of, of the 68 GSM either so that's good okay then on our wonderful Clairefontaine 90 gram French ruled paper here it is made a lot of nice shading on that that there was a, a, a big difference um, between the other papers I felt like and I liked how it looked and then the shading was more subtle in the fine nib <clears throat> And it, it even went through that. So, yeah, let's check on this. Yeah, we're seeing quite a bit of that blue stay behind. Certainly, that lives up to what they said. Water resistant and semi-permanent. Yeah, that makes sense then. Okay. All right. So, now let's do Rhodia 80 gram dot pad paper. And it looks really nice. The shading becomes just a little more subtle on this than it was on Claire Fontaine, but it's close. Um, here's the broad nib and the fine nib and same thing it, it's you know it's a tough ink it's strong it went through the rhodia which has not always happened <laughs> okay and then last paper sample here's Georgia Pacific 20 pound copy paper real real cheap typical office paper maybe even cheaper than what most offices have uh, this is kind of astounded me it, it did quite a bit of shading on there um, I don't know if you can see it or not. I can with my eye where it just, the ink pooled certain places and it was very interesting. And then much more subtle in the fine nib. And, uh, hmm. Well, that's interesting. Very light bleed through, almost comparable to that J.R. Bond ink above it. So it wasn't annoying. It wasn't really bad, even in the broad nib. You know, you can see it, especially at the dots and places that you know, the apostrophes, 
and a little bit where it was painted on but that's just a that's a freak show in terms of uh, how it compared to uh, the Loistrom paper I don't have an explanation for that because it it bled through like crazy there and here I'm only seeing it really where there are dots or where I slowed down where the pen stopped somewhere like and it's it's not even significant so who knows <laughs> that is wild okay so we'll we'll look at this but that's pretty astounding that's uh, not quite the original color it's lightened the blue and lifted quite you know some of it into the water but it's it's very strong so let's get to our comparison panel that's really interesting today I think um, I hope to be able to show this the whole thing ha huh. There, that's what happens when I mess with the tripod at all for other videos. Okay, right in the middle is our Noodler's Liberty's Elysium. And it's got some good company here. <laughs> some really bright blues. Right beside it, I put Noodler's Bay State Blue. Which is, it's so bright, but, and it's more permanent. You can see that. You can see that when the water was applied to the watercolor paper, it, it barely lifted any ink in that case. And then over here, it lifted more of it. But still, didn't, you know, compared to all the rest on this panel, these are the two that show those qualities of uh, water resistance in semi-permanence or permanence. I think, I you know, that's pretty close to permanent there. In fact, I'm sure it is bulletproof and permanent. Um, at least it is in my mind. I'm very leery of that ink. I'm scared of it because I use a lot of demonstrator pens and I don't I don't care to have them stained and I'm just, you know, I just get nervous. I'd rather use it in a pen um, that I didn't mind having it stain the section or whatever. So, okay, but let me focus uh, if I can. Um, so Monteverdi Horizon Blue I thought was a really cool um, comparison ink. And if I remember right, that one cleaned up real well. But I'll have to link you to my uh, full profile on that because so many inks that I'm looking at, I don't recall. And then down here, the brighter um, in the right-hand corner, Monteverde Capri Blue, that's brighter and lighter. But not by a whole lot, so that's interesting. And then bottom left and center, we have Diamine Blue Velvet, which has a lot of red sheening. Uh, and and it's it's dark. It it even looks a little darker on the surface than uh, Noodler's Liberty's Elysium. And then Colorverse Supernova kind of veers off into a different shade of blue a little bit. And it's also got the red sheen, so it's hard to compare the two. Uh, and then up here, okay, I really felt like also Noodler's American Eel, which shows that it isn't quite as uh, semi permanent. Uh, that's a pretty shade of blue too. It's tiny bit different. It's not that quite that same brightness, but it, it might make a person very happy that was trying to come close to this without having to worry about their pens, you know. Uh, and again, though, I need to test that more to see if that's, you know, the case, but it just gives us sort of an idea that that might be the truth. And then Monteverde uh, 2018 DC Sh Super Show Blue. And that's a beautiful ink, and I have a terrible, tragic story that I'm going to have to tell because it's a cautionary tale, and I, I feel so bad about it. But I pulled this one out at the last minute. I always have my uh, ink of the day in this little thing here, and uh, that keeps it like this is the one I'm, I'm currently reviewing, currently using, and it keeps it separated from everything else. But I think somehow it, had, it stayed out of that little container. And so did um, my Monteverde 2018 DC Super Show Blue sample. And I wound up accidentally putting what was left in my Lamy into this vial. Oh, I just can't believe it. I don't think I've ever, I've never done that before. So I'm not going to throw it away, but now I can't even review this ink because it's mixed with a little bit of Noodler's Elysium. And I'm very bummed that I could have done that. But I can understand when you look at the tops of these, you know, and I just, I thought I only had the Noodler's Elysium out, but 
then I remembered, I, I picked it up from the sink area and I said, what? I just put the wrong ink in there. But it was because I wanted this on the panel. It comes so close to the um, noodler's ink. But anyway, it, it, at least it wasn't a whole bottle. See, that's one of the reasons I use the samples to uh, fill and fill from. And and I had quite a bit left and I wanted to be able to give you guys a clean out ratio on this ink, which it did get a B. It didn't get that A rating because I really felt like um, it, it gave me, now I've still got it in this pen. I cleaned it out once already. But I had to be really careful about continuing to clean this section every time I dipped it because that blue just wanted to cling right on my beautiful serendipity and I don't want anything to stain that. And then, of course, I'll take it to the sink after this and I'm sure that ink will come off. But I wrote with it again for something. I had to go re-dip it again. Anyway, but the Lamy cleaned out just fine and there wasn't any blue stains in it. So... Um, anyway, that's my tragic story, and it's just a cautionary tale. Okay, so there were a couple others that I'm just going to mention, or just lay them here at least. This is Pilot Oroshizuku Kanpeki. It's quite a bit lighter and quite a bit brighter. That's just for you that may have this and know exactly what this one looks like. That'll help you to see where it falls. Um... Yeah, I could probably just sit it there for now. I mean, I, it's hard to take them in and out. And then Monteverde Confidence Blue. That's quite a bit um, different, too. But it still made me think of it a little bit. We'll put that here. Oops. For now, just kind of lay it in there. And then this is Colorverse Crystal Planet. And it, it's a ways, it's lighter, it's brighter, and it certainly isn't bulletproof. You, you could use that without worrying. We'll put that on top of a noodler's eel. So anyway, um, there you have it. It's a little crooked because I hate to pull them out and try to put them in. I'll, I'll knock over my tripod most likely. But I still, I like how this is working out though. This uh, new uh, system allows me to use my cutout uh, swatches and I don't have to keep repeating them on panels. So that's wonderful. It's a time saver. So I'll, I'll take these off now. Okay, and then we'll look at the visual journal real quick. Okay. And here it is. Okay, let me hold that up a little because I want you to see. Uh, this worked really well. It's just that if the paper started to dry a little too much, whatever I wrote just didn't react with the water. And it happened quite quickly that that I lost control over having it move around a little more. So, and it's quite, um, quite permanent. So it just sort of sat there, but I, but that's just a very first exploration and learning about how it behaved. And I actually thought it was very pretty going from a really light blue to the darkest, uh, that it'll do. And over here, it reacted really strong. When I just put the paintbrush tip down, it just reacted really quickly and it kind of claimed its uh, space it was very interesting you have to try it and it'll interest you a lot to see what happens um, on that so that is that and I got a bunch of stuff in today so <laughs> we'll be doing the uh, I'll be showing you the new ink samples I got a, just a few ink samples in uh, two inks in particular that I wanted to try but I'll, I'll catch that on the next video um, for this one, I'd like to wrap it and just ask you, what do you think of this, Noodler's Liberty's Elysium? Um, I had only read one, like a blog post about it, so I was just a little bit wondering if it would stain my pens, but I, it wasn't a negative blog post or anything. I just kind of, it made me alert and wondering whether it would be rough to deal with, and I would just give it a B. I, I just think you have to be a little more vigilant and make sure, and I don't think I'd stick it in a, a demonstrator pen that I didn't want to have stained because I, that's not the kind of experiment I want to do. Although I would put it in a 992, a Gen Hao 992. I might even dedicate one to that. And then I we could learn quite a bit about that. Uh, if I do that, I'll let you know what happens. <laughs> so uh, my Lamy Vista, poor Lamy Vista just gets whatever comes across the desk because it, that has standardized the way I look at the inks. Um, but, oh dear, this is getting long now. So I need to wrap it up and I'll see you on the next video. Please let me know what you think of this uh, bright blue. Bye for now.